We're with Israel at Arcane Design. What do you got going on here? One of the cooler tables aesthetically here. I like the helmet with the skull. Appreciate it. Yeah, uh, super excited to be here at CCKS. I really do love this show. It's a new location, but still really enjoying it. We got a lot of really cool things uh, on the table that you can check out. So our latest model is called the Creature. It's a 3.75 inch blade that comes in a both a drop point and a tanto configuration. For the show, we have some pretty special like uh, pivot collars that we've added already. And so this is a beautiful Damasteel version with Zerku tie kit already installed on it. We have a couple of really cool one-off pieces like this Necronaut. It's a knife that has been out of stock for a long time, but uh, we decided to do one really cool in this beautiful electric blue Anno. And it doesn't it doesn't come through. It never does. Yeah, well, it doesn't come through. The way I want. <laughs> for sure. Uh, this is also uh, one of the uh, Plexus that will be coming out probably next month or so. Um, that one we decided to do a really interesting like finger choil cut on it. So because a lot of people it doesn't usually have a finger choil, but this is a finger choil added. Uh, and then we have the Crypt, which is a, a, a design that we've had for a few months now. Um, and it's just- I absolutely know, love this. It's so comfortable in hand. I, it I, looks so wild. It um, does. It's. I think this is the most, for me, the most comfortable one you've made so far. I like a bunch of your knives, yeah. but this is probably the most comfortable one I've ha that I've handled. Yeah, definitely. So really enjoying those. And then if you're into more smaller knives, uh, the Praytheon is probably for you. It's a 3.25 inch blade. It's a fully ambidextrous, so the screw, the uh, clip can go on either side. It's an inset liner lock in 20 CV, and then we also have a um, S35 VN and G10 version uh, that's less expensive. So, so some got of your you've got some of your knives that are coming out more budget. Yeah, we decided to do uh, one knife uh, on the budget realm to see what that looked like and how they performed. They've performed really well so far. So. Um, Definitely in the future, we might do some more runs uh, with, yeah, just uh, more valuable, more uh, materials that are value friendly. So it makes the knives a little bit more accessible. Now, I do want to talk about something because this is something that I hadn't been really into for a long time, but you guys have got some really cool pry bars. Yeah, so this is the space bar. It's a seven millimeter thick full titanium construction pry bar and bit driver. So there's a magnetic storage compartment here in the back that when you take it out, it stores up to two Weeha micro bits and uh, it attaches here on the back. So whenever your knife uh, needs some maintenance, you can actually have a two-in-one tool with you. And then when you need to pry something open, you have a, a really sturdy chunk of titanium in order to do so. That is absolutely one of the coolest, aesthetically coolest Fry bars I've Thank seen. Thank you, I appreciate it. This one took a while to design and it's probably the thing I carry the most with me at all times. I, I never understood having a pry bar until I got a pry bar. Until you, yeah, until you get a until pry I got bar, a pry and bar, bar and I like, realized I, actually I, use like, it. I use this way more than definitely, I thought I would. Definitely, man, definitely, definitely. It's like a pocket flashlight. It's another, uh, an EDC exactly. flashlight. Something I never thought of you never until I got you one. You needed it until you got it. I was like, I absolutely For never sure. without one, so yeah. Thanks. I'm glad Appreciate we got over it. here before it got crazy. Mike, thank You're you so much for stopping by. Love the channel. Love everything you do. And uh, have, have a great Appreciate rest of your show. And we talked about it earlier. We may be seeing a couple of these knives on the channel soon. So, all right, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks. It's going to be real quick. We're with Tim and Marissa over at Chris Reeve Knives. Congratulations, by the way. So, Tim has got a couple of really interesting Sabenzas on the table. Well, a handful of them. Well, there's a Sabenza, oh, yeah. Umnumzon. Well, Sabenza, Umnumzon, and Large and Cozy. Kind of doing and the cozy. big three. Yeah. yeah. But uh, the one that got me was, these are not titanium. That I thought that was just bronze anode titanium, but they are... Actually brass. They're made out of 360 brass. Uh, so they're they're uh, a stainable brass. And we glass blast the, the outside finish so it matches the back handle and everything. But if you sandblast things or glass blast whatever, it it makes it porous and so it'll make it patina kind of even faster um, as opposed to say like a polished so what we did was it just yeah it's a full solid front here I'll put oh, a glove on <laughs> and I can actually 
I put these together with gloves and uh, put them in like a plastic bag and <laughs> to bring them down here and put a little oil, like a little WD-40 on them. Um, it was the first time I put them together, they rust, they like patine it overnight. But I love anything that is like champagne gold colored. And yeah. so this is a lot of fun to work on. It's all, all up my alley, but um, yeah. The cool part of this is they'll, whoever buys them will put their patina on them and see what happens. That is actually so. beautiful. I like how you actually went above and kind of polished the hardware as well. Yeah, I thought we'd throw, throw a little bit in there. I polished the yeah the pivots, the various hardware bits. So yeah, man, they're they're kind of kind of cool. That that is really, and I just like I said, I just wanted to do it. You guys sold all the stuff before I could even get over to the table. Right. Yeah, the first um, comes went pretty quick. Yeah, so That's I just thought it would be cool because these are the lottery pieces, and these are. You said 800? Yeah, 800 piece. So there's there's only one of each. Um, yeah, lottery, we're drawing at three o'clock today. So a lottery for a chance to win. And uh, yeah, they turned out pretty cool. Everybody's been pretty excited about them so far. So yeah, you know. the, they are, that's the, the uniqueness of it. It's kind of, not only is it kind of a one of a kind thing, cause you don't, that's, is this the first time you've ever done it? Yeah, well, so we did the, uh, for Monkey Edge last year, we did, bra we called, they were known as the Brass Monkeys. So it was the Monkey Edge frag pattern of Nuzons. Then we did a bunch of other brass hardware on them, them as well. But uh, these were, so long, here's the kind of funny thing behind the scenes. These were the, actually the proof of concept handles for the Brass Monkey series. So we built these about a year ago. They've been sitting in my office. I was like, we got to get these out in the world because they're just kind of too cool. Yeah. I wanted to see what happens to the brass, you know, to the general general public. So uh, I just cleaned them up, refinished them. Like I said, I, I, I had, they sat around for a year. I had a couple of little fingerprints from what I originally boxed them a year ago. So we had to clean them up and they yeah. got my wheels going. I thought, hey, this is kind of a fun. So not only is it a unique piece because they're kind of a one of a kind thing because they're in brass, but then it's going to patina and there will never be another one that would ever patina the same. Depends yeah, on how they thing, carry it. Right? Thing. Yeah, yeah it'll, it'll do its own thing. Um, I guess, you know, if you like, we'll still spa service it. We can always just blast, blast it off and then start fresh. And, you know, if somebody bought one from somebody else or something, I, I don't or, see why we wouldn't do Or that. you could go the route and mask everything on the back off, force patina it with a little bit of rock salt and rub and uh, ammonia yeah. and have a a pirate yeah. patina one. Yeah. That would be the, I, the actually would, I would look say, cool. If you're, if you're going to go start playing with it, it's just Make sure you don't blow the holes out. Yeah, yeah. You know, because that'll start causing problems. But outside of that, that's I mean, why I say mask everything with the yeah. li that, I, yeah, that yeah, liquid exactly. masking agent I sure, told you about. You that we, yeah, it would, yeah. That'd be the only thing I'd be worried about is like the holes. But uh, outside of that, I mean, I, I said, yeah. so anyway, this could be really like they could look really cool, or they might end up looking really dumb. We don't know. <laughs> Who knows? It'll so, be a year. But that's what like these these shows, like especially the California Custom Show, is to do fun stuff like this. And so you know, I came up, I just had a little idea, and was like, we can pull it's, this. It's together. awesome. Well, it was good to see you, Tim. It's always hey, fun always. to get to see yeah, you. Yeah, it's a pleasure. All right, guys, if you don't know about knife rights, you've been living in a cave because they're doing a lot. But let's go ahead and Doug can tell you about knife rights. Knife rights exist so that you can own the knife you want, not the knife the government tells you you can have. We have gone around the country getting rid of knife bans. 40 bills passed so far since 2010 repealing knife bans and now we are going to court to get rid of bans that we can't get rid of legislatively. Philadelphia, for example, banned the carry of any knife in public. You can carry any knife you want in Philadelphia now, thanks to knife rights and our lawsuit that we won. So that's what knife rights does. It's looking out for you, it's looking out for knife owners, looking out for knife makers, so that you can own, carry, any knife that you would like. So, and uh, this month, I believe, is the 24-hour knife rights telethon thing that we're doing, I believe. Knives month. Live. Knives Live. Yeah, I think that. I think it's this month. I haven't seen anything, but I probably will have a spot. But yeah, they have done so much. You guys, didn't you guys just sue Hawaii about so that, the switchblade ban or so something? So, the, the Hawaii lawsuit is a pair of lawyers who are doing that work that we are supporting with amicus briefs. That was one at the Ninth Circuit. Uh, it will now go to a uh, en banc, in other words, a full court, because they didn't like the results. Because the results were not just good for switchblade owners or uh, butterfly knife owners and why, 
it would have been good for the Second Amendment throughout the Ninth Circuit. Which and they can't really, stand yeah, that. It really should fall under the whole Second Amendment with that whole new the the case in New York where they have to go back to you know historical precedent. The decision in Bruin uh, changed everything. I mean, that's one reason why we are able to now do lawsuits against the city of Philadelphia to get rid of the federal switchblade act. We're in California where we're suing California over their limit, under two inch limit for switchblades. This gives us the crowbar we need to pry these really terrible, irrational laws loose and get rid of them. The cudgel of prior legislation. There you go. All right. Thank you very much, Doug. And I, I, I will get you on a live feed sometime. You know, I'm out here in San Diego. You're in New Mexico? Gilbert, Arizona. Yeah, Arizona. So it's really not that much of a time difference. We'll get some figured out sometime. So you'll probably see if Doug's not incredibly busy, which I know he always is, on a live feed as a guest. And we can talk about some some things that people may have. We'll have live questions and stuff like that. So happy to do it. Thank you very much, Doug. Guys, it's an absolutely beautiful evening out here. I'm just going to close out this video as a car drives by. Uh, just by saying, like, I'm glad you guys uh, are enjoying these. Hopefully you enjoy these videos. I'm not putting ads for my sponsors in. I want these videos to stand alone. You're going to see the individual snippets from these videos released as well. So if you don't want to have to watch a 12 or 14 minute video, you can uh, watch just the clips. So that way, that way it's a little bit easier for you if, if that's how you want to pursue it. But you, you are going to miss stuff if you do it that way. So. Guys, check out my sponsors down below. Give them some of your money. It supports the channel. Coffee Brand Coffee, absolutely amazing. They've been great to work with. Um, you can check out all of my affiliate links down below as well. You can get a discount code, Coffee Brand Coffee, Tempered Trail, Rosecraft Blades, um, Farm Forge Knife Works. It's crazy sharp, all one word. And you can go to, uh, I'm trying to, th oh, there's a link down below for my public discord and you can look at what I offer for my members. See if you want to join the channel, support it that way. Guys, I will see you in the next video. That's not even the end, not even close to the end of the first day.